Formerly the mainstay warship of Earth Force prior to the introduction of the Omega class, but enduring long afterwards as the workhorse of the Earth fleet, the venerable Hyperion class heavy cruiser is the longest serving military vessel in the history of the Earth Alliance. The vessel has seen extensive frontline action in three major interstellar wars, and has won the respect of countless Earth Force service people for its unfailing reliability. At a length of 1,025 meters and a width of 286.5 meters, the frame of the Hyperion class lacks the uniform armored structure of later Earth Force vessels, and instead presents a narrower and more skeletal profile, with much of its armor and weapon systems concentrated within its forward quarter. The vessel carries a crew of 356, supported by 200 EFMC Marines, for shipboard security and defense against hostile boarding actions. The Hyperion class is not equipped with any manner of centrifuge hab, and as such its crew live and work in zero gravity at all times, often throughout assignments lasting many months. The Hyperion class carries an impressive and varied arsenal of weapons, including two forward-facing particle laser arrays, one turreted heavy plasma cannon, eight turreted medium pulse cannons, and a pair of fusion missile launchers. The ship also boasts six to eight meters of layered hull armor, and eleven Type 1 interceptor arrays, for defense against both ballistic and directed energy projectiles. In addition to its considerable firepower, the Hyperion is also equipped with a small air wing, consisting of six Star Fury Aurora Space Superiority Fighters, later replaced by the newer Star Fury Thunderbolt model, following its introduction in 2260. In addition to serving as an effective means of reconnaissance and providing a limited fighter screen, the Hyperion's six Star Furies also represent the ship's only means of disembarking personnel without performing docking maneuvers, as the vessel does not carry any shuttlecraft as part of its standard complement. Long after its many victories in the Dilgar War, the Hyperion class had the dubious honor of firing the first shots of the Earth Minbari War, when Captain Michael Jankowski of the EAS Prometheus witnessed the gun ports of an approaching Minbari vessel open, and preemptively opened fire. Having misinterpreted an ancient Minbari tradition as the prelude to an attack, ironically the Hyperion class would also be responsible for Earth's only unfettered victory against the Minbari a year later, when Commander John Sheridan assumed command of the EAS Lexington following the death of its captain, and subsequently destroyed the flagship of the Minbari Federation through the strategic use of improvised thermonuclear mines. Thirteen years later, the Hyperion class found itself serving on both sides of the Earth Alliance Civil War, often struggling to hold its own against the newer and more powerful Omega class destroyer. In spite of its significant age, the Hyperion class remained a meaningful threat during the conflict, taking part in the attack on Babylon 5 following its secession from the Earth Alliance, and later in numerous pivotal engagements across the Sol system in the waning days of the conflict. The Hyperion class was even responsible for the death of the original leader of the Earth Alliance Resistance. General William Haig, after a lethal ambush carried out by the EAS Clarkstown, wiped out much of the senior staff of the Resistance's flagship, the EAS Alexander. Following the conclusion of the Earth Alliance Civil War, and the subsequent formation of the Interstellar Alliance, the Hyperion class entered the final years of its long career. Though no new vessels of the class were constructed, those still in service were refitted with artificial gravity plating, acquired by Earth as part of its enrollment in the Interstellar Alliance. Finally disappearing from use in the mid-2280s, the Hyperion class has left an impressive legacy for its decades of tireless service, and for its many feats of incredible perseverance, often in the face of near-impossible odds. Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.